The story unfolds in the small town of Wengenberg, where a young girl named Jennifer lives with a facial deformity and a noticeable hump in the family of a cattleman. Due to her unattractive appearance, Jennifer endures constant mockery from the locals. One day, when taunted by a couple of local young men, Jennifer accidentally opens a portal to the magical world of Lara in Aritusa. In this enchanted realm, she encounters the young wizard Istrid. Concerned about the magical traces that can be used to locate individuals with magical abilities, Istrid decides to save Jennifer by opening a portal to return her home. Later, a wealthy lady arrives at Jennifer's father's farm to buy a pig, but expresses a desire to purchase Jennifer as well. Despite her mother's protests, Jennifer's father, disgusted with his daughter, sells her for half the price of the animal, recognizing the lady as a witch. Jennifer finds herself in the magical school of the Enchantress Desiree, where several girls are already studying. Initially, Jennifer struggles with the separation from home and the harsh judgment of her father. She even attempts suicide. However, as classes commence, she discovers that her inadvertent use of magic caught the attention of the school's rector, Wizard Desiree. Desiree subjects the girls to a test where they must lift a stone and a flower without touching them, using only a spell. While most of the girls succeed, Jennifer fails. Despite her repeated attempts, Desiree stops her. Frustrated, Jennifer runs away and later encounters Istrid in a cave, revealing her name. Desiree continues to train her female pupils, testing their ability to recognize a man's greatest fear. The girls are paired and instructed to gaze into each other's eyes until they penetrate their rival's thoughts. Paired with another girl in an attempt to encourage her, Jennifer faces another failure enraging Desiree who deems her useless. Desiree asserts that even if Jennifer were beautiful, no one would love her. However, Jennifer is not alone in facing problems. She confides in her only friend, Istrid, who shares his struggles during his schooling. Istrid offers to read her mind, and Jennifer succeeds. Amidst a stormy night, Desiree wakes the girls and takes them to Torlalara, the most powerful magical place on the continent, accessible only to members of the Wizard Brotherhood. The test involves controlling the flows of chaos by catching lightning in a bar. Some girls, skeptical of the possibility, experience strong discharges even after catching the lightning. When it's Jennifer's turn, her attempt fails, leading to frustration. Enraged, she directs her power at her more successful opponent, Desiree blocking her mental blow. Later, Desiree reprimands Jennifer, warning that her emotions can endanger herself and others. The Enchantress doubts Jennifer's suitability for the wizarding chapter, fearing she might harm the ruler with her feelings. Frustrated, Jennifer confides everything in Istrid, but the Enchantress discovers their secrets, prohibiting them from seeing each other again. Istride proposes introducing Jennifer to more ancient and powerful magic, revealing skulls of death. These elves were the first wizards of the continent, slaughtered by humans. Drick gives Jennifer a flower that grows only with elder blood and teaches her a spell to open a portal. The astonished wizard is perplexed by her success, and Jennifer reveals her true parentage. Her real father was a half-elf who died in the purge. It was her real father's blood that caused Jennifer's unattractive appearance. Istride kisses Jennifer and confesses his love. Later, she reveals the flower to Desiree, disclosing that obtaining the plant was her assignment. By employing false emotion skills, Jennifer hopes to elevate herself. The Enchantress promises to inform her when it's time, indicating a forthcoming knock. Meanwhile, Istrid reports to his mentor, Strega Bar, about what he has learned about Jennifer. One night, Jennifer hears a knock at her neighbor's door and, taking the flower, follows them. Desiree turns four former fellow students into eels, with Jennifer pushed to perform this magical act. They become conduits of magic for our Raituza, and Jennifer witnesses the silhouettes of former schoolmates in the water. Time passes, and Jennifer enjoys a love affair with Istride, applying her learned skills to enhance the intimacy's effect. She creates an imaginary crowd that applauds the lovers, amazing Istrid with her imagination. As the day of the final rite approaches, Jennifer dreams of graduating from Aretuza, returning to her native Aden as a powerful sorceress to confront her longtime abusers and her father. Why Tuza graduates undergo perfection before being sent to different kingdoms, where physical defects are removed.
The wizard in charge shows Jennifer the flawless beauty of the graduates and offers to make her elegant and noble but strong and gray. Sighing, he teaches her to envision the most powerful woman in the world in the mirror. Despite complying, Jennifer has yet to witness the promised beauty. Meanwhile, the chapter of wizards gathers in Aretusa to decide whether graduates should serve as court wizards for all kings. It is revealed that Stregobor, one of the council leaders, knows that Jennifer is a quarter elf, making her ineligible for acceptance at Aretusa due to prejudice against elves. The chapter votes to send Jennifer to Nilfgaard, a decision she strongly opposes. When she demands an audience with the chapter, Desiree declares herself in charge of the distribution, leaving Jennifer frustrated. Realizing that Stregobor knew about her elven blood, Jennifer attends the initiation ceremony, worried about her future. Strid finds a letter to her father, asking for confirmation of her parentage. He is skeptical that the letter will convince the chapter, but Jennifer is uncertain about what to do. Even if Istrid disproves his words, she fears no one will believe him. Frustrated, she realizes she has missed all the initiation spells. Istrid suggests going with him as an explorer, traveling the continent and discovering the unknown. However, Jennifer cruelly ridicules his plan, expressing her disinterest in digging through the dust of the ages. Istrid is shocked by her response, realizing Jennifer is not what he thought. He suggests that Jennifer is angry because she missed her chance to find beauty, but she needs power. Disregarding Istrid's intentions, Jennifer runs to the enchanter in charge of perfection, demanding to showcase her art. Despite the pain of the transformation process, she insists on retaining the cut marks on her hand as a reminder of her former weakness. The magician warns her that every magic has a price, and Jennifer agrees to everything, even the removal of her womb for a complete transformation. During the process, she screams in pain, ripping the chains that bind her. Losing consciousness, Jennifer undergoes a transformation. In the main hall of Aretusa, the initiation ball continues, and Desiree notices a door opening. An unusually beautiful Jennifer with violet eyes appears. Realizing Jennifer has disobeyed her orders, Desiree is too late to intervene. The ruler notices Jennifer's beauty and invites her to a dance, expressing a desire to see her as a court wizard in his kingdom. Sairi can only watch the dance from afar. The narration concludes by mentioning that the adaptation is based on Sapkowski's series of books and the Witcher's world of magic, monsters, and steel swords has been vividly and effectively transferred. The adventures of the female protagonist are anticipated to become even more exciting in the next episodes.